Hello and welcome to the traditional annual phantom draft that we do together. Bush, I would say that, but it's actually only the second time we've done it in four years. How are you? That's good, mate. That's how you start these traditions. Is this actually our second, fifth draft? 17? Yeah. yeah 18, 17, 19, 20, so. 21. So that's two out of five. So that's actually 40%. Really, really poor form. Um, but it is a tradition that I do enjoy as yeah. rarely as we do it. Um, essentially today, we're going to be going through our top 40 phantom draft for the 2021 AFL draft. How it's going to work is we're going to alternate picks and uh, and then just Except see. we're both drafting as our own teams because they both have three picks each. So mm-hmm. Jesse's West Coast, I'm Dockers, just add a bit of fun. Yes, that's right. So we'll pick for our own clubs today as well, um, but we'll start at the top. I think we said I'll go first with pick yeah, one. Yeah, because that works out nicely for me as the Dockers that will organically go if you go first. Yeah, sweet. So we'll go all the way to uh, pick 40 and, um, and maybe I'll add up a little graphic in there as well and just give a little brief explanation of why we're taking that player uh, i understand that cal is releasing his fandom draft um later today so it's really taken the wind out of our sails <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> but um his will be interesting because he actually gets a bit of late mail whereas we're more we're just a couple of can- casual handsome sort of uh draft followers but um, we're not cal or or nightmare or anything like that um bush how are you feeling towards the draft in general i'm feeling pretty good yeah as a Fremantle fan with three picks in the top 21 or 20 even yeah, i'm quite optimistic we can do some good stuff with those picks I've heard a few talks of us trying to trade up and stuff, but I'd almost rather just stay put, get two good kids through the door instead of one really good kid. Yeah, you want to focus on kids you can really develop over a four-year period and then maximise their trade value? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a la Adam Chera. Josh Ward. <laughs> broke even. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so we'll go through uh, the picks. I'll go first um, all the way through to 40, like I said. Uh, with the rule with bidding, we yep. agreed beforehand would be if I, say, have a pick and I bid on a player, then you have the right as the player, as the other team to match the bid. On the matching club, yeah. Um, and then I would stay on the clock in that in an instance, but you also have the option to, to allow Dacos to go yeah. to Gold Coast. I'll just do that for a laugh. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> um, I Just did that up. in the Phantom Draft a few years ago. I uh, allowed Viney to get... Taken with Gold Coast for pick two. <laughs> mm. Anyway, yeah, you should have seen the scenes on bigfooty.com. Um, anyway, yeah, let's get into it, eh? Uh, yeah. I'll start us off with the North Melbourne Football Club with their number one draft pick. Have they had a number one draft pick for a while, if ever? I can't recall one. I don't know. Maybe we should look that up. But um, anyway, they're going to take their prized uh, number one draft pick and not bid on a player. I think that's the way the, the news is sort of trending. They're going to take their potential marquee player in Jason Horn Francis, who is a 184 centimeter explosive sort of uh, wing, uh, sorry, uh, midfielder forward who has been playing against men for the last year. And uh, some say he could have been playing AFL this whole time, but he's a potential marquee player as that real match winning type. So that's why North have, um, you know, avoided trade yep. offers for, for trading big trade pick. offers yes yeah th- there were some big deals offered for this pick. So uh, North take Jason Horn Francis and GWS is on the clock pusher. Most people probably have Nick Dacos ranked higher than the person I'm going to bid on here, but Ooh. I think Sam Darcy feels more of a need for GWS than Nick Dacos, so I'm going to bid on him first. That is stinky. I uh, I like it. I um, I will match the bid, undoubtedly. That uh, that would hurt Bulldogs fans if that happens, because that obviously changes the, uh, the amount of picks that they need to match and uh, their resultant pick, but I like it. With, we're making it spicy, so... Uh, tell us a little bit more about Sam Darcy. He's the notable key pro- key position prospect in the draft. He's sitting at about 204 centimetres, so about 6'8 in the old talk. He's still slightly built, but he's got plenty of frame to grow into as he gets older. He's more of like a Maxi King type of leading forward rather than a Crash Packs big sort of key forward. He's more of a long, Eric Woody Max mm. King type of guy. Yep. Yeah, cool. But he probably add something interesting to that Bulldogs forward line with Norton and Jamara and Cody Waitman. It's a good developing forward line Some they've got going. Serious talent in that dog side. So GWS are back on the clock. What are you doing with this pick? I'll make another bid on the man I mentioned before, Nick Dykos, because at this point he's probably the clear-cut most talented player available. He's had a prodigious build-up to the draft. In an open draft, a lot of people consider him the number one, even over Horn Francis, who's been outstanding. I've sort of got him as a bit of an inside-outside mid, sort of how I'd classify him. He can add a bit of that class and silk on the outside like his brother, but he's also good at accumulating and getting the troops going. Yep, I like it. It's certainly a player they're probably looking to build their next little rebuild out um, over, around, rather. Yep. So we got Horn Francis pick one, Sam Darcy went pick two, Dacos pick three. You're still on the clock, Busher, with uh, GWS. This is the yep. pick that shapes the draft. 
Well, like I said before, with my logic of going Darcy over Dacos, they don't have as much of a need for a midfielder, so I'm going to go a bit of a curveball and take Josh Gibkiss, the key back. I like it, yep, yep. What do you like about Josh Gibkiss? He's got great intercept, modern style key back, but it's that more interceptor rather than necessarily stick on his man and shut him down. He's that can float, control himself in a zone type defense, that type of defender. Mm. And I think GWS, even though they've got some good keys in it, like good bigger keys, backs specifically, he's someone that can still slide into their back line with like Sam Taylor. Yeah, that's right. So they got um, D- Davis, Phil Davis, and yep. uh, Lockie Keefe, I think it is, at the end of his career, um, yeah. which means they need a long term partner to Taylor. We should clarify as well in this draft, we're actually picking as though we are the teams. Yep. We're not trying to predict. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We're, we're, not, we're not trying to predict the yeah. phantom draft. We are taking picks as though we're these clubs yeah, and making our own strategy. Yeah, thinking like what we need as that club rather exactly. than sort of best available necessarily. Even though best available probably is a strategy for some clubs, let's be honest. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we've got pick five of the Gold Coast Suns here um, and I'm on the clock and I, I'm torn here between a best available pick and um, probably more of a need. I'm going to go best available here because I think this guy's too good to let go to pick six and I'm going to go with Finn Callahan, who is uh, pretty much unanimously the third or, or yeah, at least a third or fourth best player in the uh, in the draft pool. Has that sort of taller, originally outside, but also proven himself inside explosive you know, midfielder who's been compared yeah. to Bontempelli as well. So I did have him above Gibkiss as a talent. I was just sort of yep. needs based. Yeah, was, Gibkiss is going to be an interesting one yeah. where we don't know exactly where he's going to fall. It seems where he's actually rated on talent might not reflect where he's actually drafted because um, of the lack yeah. of tools in this draft. So uh, you've got Adelaide with pick six, mate. Ooh. I think Adelaide's dream scenario was Horn Francis, but that <laughs> hasn't happened in this case. So I think they're going to have to settle for another midfielder because I think they would still look to another midfielder because. I've said it on a previous video, I don't think they have any genuine A-grade midfield talent at the moment. Yep. So I think on that note, I'd probably go with someone like... Probably Ben Hobbs I would take at this pick. Interesting. Just as that nuggety... Even though he's a bit similar to some of the guys they do have, I still think he's a good enough talent to add something to Adelaide and they're still building, so they need to probably go best available over someone who might be slightly more suitable. That's right, yeah. Well, I'm torn here. There's a few options here. I didn't expect Josh Rochelle to be available here for the Hawthorne Footy Club at pick seven. Um, I was originally thinking of a midfielder, but I feel like on best available basis, I think I'm going to take Rochelle because I don't think they expected him to be available. Um, he is a small forward in the mould of a, uh, well, he's been compared to both Alan Didak and Toby Green as a match winning half forward. I don't know if he's got midfield application long term. But um, either way, just in terms of the way he impacts in the short term, I think he could come in and play a role pretty pretty early days. So with picks in the 20s, Hawthorne can maybe look to grab another couple of inside mids at 23, excuse me, 23, which will become and 25. So they're going to take Rochelle here. Fair and enough. you've got your, your boys on the clock with Fremantle. And I've just switched to my special Docker-specific big board that I've made for this activity. There's two names in particular at the top that interest me. I think I'm going to go out of the two. I'm going to go with Matthew Johnson mm. from Subiaco. I like it. I think he's the one more likely to be taken sooner, so I'm going to lock him in. Yep. Cool. He's a big-bodied midfielder. They sort of compare him a bit to Scotty Pendlebury. He's a bit bigger. I'd sort of say he's a nice little Mundy-type replacement player. Like, Mundy can give him a couple of years of pointing him in the right direction as he sails off into the sunset. Yep. I, I like that one. Uh, he's quite a unique sort of player in this draft as well. Um, so, yeah, good pickup for Fremantle. I'm with Richmond here, and I think my original um, goals for Richmond in this draft would have been a Ben Hobbs, who's gone. The other one was probably Josh Gibkus as a best available tour. But there's another player here that um, is still on the board and perhaps may not actually be on the board in reality by this pick, but I'm going to take the best available Mac Andrew. Um, Richmond are doing, you know, kind of a, a full list rebuild in a, in a sense in, in that they they need it, talent in every position. Certainly the midfield is a focus, but when you've got a Mac Andrew type uh, available, there is a, as a potentially a very unique style Ruckman um, with his athleticism as well. And like I said, plenty of picks in the 20s for them as well, so they can grab the midfielders later. So, yeah, you're back on the clock with Richmond. Uh, Freeman, I'm I think I might annoy a few Dockers fans with this one. I probably would have taken Mac Andrew with this second pick, actually, but considering you've left Neil Erasmus to me, I'm going to happily take him. Well, you've annoyed West Coast fans with that pick as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the reason I said I might annoy some Dockers fans with that one is because they'd probably like the key 
position mm. player to go with that second pick, but I think there will be a good key available with our next pick, so I'm willing to take that gamble to get through our best available talent in Erasmus. To be honest, I would have been tempted to take him for St Kilda anyway, so... Um yeah. Uh, okay, we still got Josh Ward on the board here. I'm picking with St Kilda's pick 11. Yep. Oh, actually, are you? Because I'm picking with West Coast. I can pick it, but yeah, I'm guessing we're both taking Josh Ward. Here. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll let you do the Josh Ward pick. All right, we'll take Josh Ward. He seems like a. He's probably a good target for St Kilda because he's one that's sort of mentioned a little bit, but he's not as open to moving as some other prospects. St Kilda's a team that needs probably another inside mid. He's a guy that they can get through the door and develop to fill a role in that midfield I like it I'm so torn here um, as, so I'm picking for West Coast so just to clarify that's yep. why I didn't take that pick um, Bush has let me take the West Coast pick and I'm torn here because I would have loved a midfielder in the in the form of an Erasmus or a Johnson um, even a Hobbs as a sneaky chance so I'm, I'm looking at two plays here Amos and Sin and um, I think I'm going to bite the bullet and take the best available talent in Amos oh but I think Sin is actually the better player <laughs> I think I'm going to go for the local talent at Amos, to be honest. Um, the Eagles have Josh Kennedy retiring at the end of the year. That's all but a certainty. Um, and they need, you know, a partner to Allen um, and Waterman's around um, and Darling's, you know, 30. So, yeah. yeah, Eagles fans aren't going to like that. But I actually think this kid is a ripper talent and, um, and you know, high upside as well for a kid that was playing in the country. Sorry, travelling from the country to play and, you know, his development. And I will say I did hate passing on him with those two picks because he is exactly what Freo needs because no one at Fremantle can kick accurately and Jai Amos is an incredibly accurate key forward, kicking 51-14 mm. for the year. I could see him and Allen being a very long, good long partnership yeah. for the Eagles and I think uh, Eagles fans look at that and cringe now, but in five years might be very happy that we ended up with that. So, uh, Essendon's on the board with you. Ooh. I think I might go with your other person you're tossing up with between these two picks and go with Josh Sin because mm. I've got him mentioned here as a bit of a half back outside mid type of player like that sort of how he projects I think Essendon could use someone like that still yep I like it uh, I, and it would pace off their half back line or even supplement their wing or whatever depending on how they develop him I was very reluctant to let him go to be honest I really wanted him for West Coast um, yeah he's, a, he's an outstanding talent add something different to pretty much any list yep. I think Port Adelaide uh, they have one local boy on the list there that they'll be tempted to take, but I'm not going to do it. Ooh. I'm not going to be a basic bitch. I'm going to say, excuse me, they take Josh Goda, who is a... I've got him down as a, as a midfielder. He's kind of a utility that's played as a sort of intercepting defender, but I think has pretty good midfield application. Um, it looks like a... Looks like he reads the play well and uses the ball well by hand. Obviously, there's a few more things that go into being a midfielder, but uh, I think... That's he's potentially higher talent. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Goda. Like, if I took one of those key position guys with my top ten as a Dockers person, he would have been someone I would have been targeting with that later pick, hoping they'd fall. Yeah, for sure. He's he's a bit of a riskier pick, but I think with Port Adelaide's uh, history of you know nailing the draft in recent times, they can take a, a peak of this nature. Yeah. So GWS is on the board. And with their first pick, I ended up taking the key defender. So I think in this case, I probably will go a midfielder just because. Arlo Draper sort of seems to be the standout at this point of available talent. I like it. I like so it. I'm like going to go with your boy Arlo Draper, but I've seen you pump up on a few vids. I do like Arlo Draper. Um, and uh, it's also worth considering you'd already taken Gibkiss with GWS. Yep, so you exactly. could, you, you've had that the needs rationale. ticked off. Yep, absolutely. Yep. And all Is the that, like rocks and stuff are probably a bit out of range. Yeah, it's the construction going on next door. I thought it was an earthquake. <laughs> cool. All right. So the Brisbane Lions are up with pick 16. And I'm looking at two boys. One's an absolute bolter. Noah No <laughs> um, oh, I don't know I want to take this guy early But I don't know If you'll like it Man that is loud Yeah <laughs> um, Brisbane With pick 16 Are going to take Jesse Motlop From South Fremantle Oy. I have a feeling This kid will bolt I have a feeling He will And he's, uh, he's a very talented Sort of small Medium defender He's um, proven it at league level to an extent. Yeah, exactly. I think, and he's got a really good head on his shoulders as well. He does yep. his own content, makes his own podcast. So anyone who does a podcast and is called Jesse is a legend. Okay. Um, so yeah, Brisbane overlooking some really good talents there. I think that will be the big. Well, no, I don't necessarily think he'll go to Brisbane, but I actually would have taken him with GWS. So okay. uh, I believe they're keen. So so Richmond's back on the board. Uh, this is one where I've probably half not picked him a couple of times because I've tried to slide him for that next Freo pick but mm. realistically I don't think he's going to make it Naziah Wanganin Miller Ooh. 
as an outside utility midfield type player. I like it. I was hoping he was going to be there at 20 for Brisbane. That's uh, why I didn't take him. Because I was hoping for Freo because another outside... We need, still might need another wing type player, so he would have been a good use of that. But more generally, he's a fast wing, skilled. Yep. Can be a real good link-up player for his team. Add a bit of class and silk. Yep. Nice one. I like it. Uh, which gives me Sydney. And uh, they are on the market for, I would say... Maybe, you know, best available sort of inside mid or a key position defender. And I think there is the best available one on the board is actually Jacob Van Ruin. <laughs> I'd already highlighted his name going, yep, he's going to yeah, keep Van Ruin, um, I reckon. Yeah, he's a very talented player from Claremont who um, has shown up in big games. I think he kicked four in a grand final and he kicked the winner against South Australia um, when, you know, he's predominantly a defender and who can swing forward. So I uh, think he projects as a very good player for Sydney. So they've yeah. taken two very good West Australian key position players in back-to-back years. Melbourne have traded in for this pick. They've got pick 19 and then they're on the board. Melbourne's a bit of a weird one, it feels like, because I've got just that much talent all over the board. Like, it's... I'm going to go for a bit of an upside pick here, actually. Yeah. I'm going to take Mitch Nevitt. Mitch Nevitt. Ooh. It's... I think he's got that potential to turn into a elite, genuine star type of player. So I think at this position and the luxury of how good they are, they can take a gamble on someone who could be good. Yeah. Give him the chance to develop. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah. Nightmare's a big fan on him as well. I think he rated him like in the top 15 originally I don't know his latest rankings look a little different so I can't remember off the top of my head but um, yeah I'll take Brisbane's second pick here they do need a, a halfback flanker with a bit of class so Darcy Wilmot is probably the best available player of that type I took a Bolter and Jesse Motlop and uh, I'm going to supplement that with Darcy Wilmot as the best available. We'll take a little pause there and just, and just sort of reflect on the top 20 we've yep, got so far. Round. It's the yep. first round. Is it the first round? Yeah, because the next pick's that Freo pick 19. Ah, uh, so yeah, this yeah. is the end of the first day, yep. so that works out nicely. Yeah. Horn Francis went pick one, Sam Darcy second. Nick Dacos was bid on with pick three, so surprisingly Dacos comes after Darcy. Gibkus went pick four to the Giants. Callahan pick five to the Gold Coast Suns. Adelaide took Hobbs. The Hawks took Rochelle. Fremantle then doubled up with Johnson and Erasmus. And in between that, Mac Andrew joined Richmond. Josh Ward slipped out of the top 10 to join St Kilda. And West Coast were forced to take a best available talent in the key forward in Jai Amos. There was a series of, or a couple of Joshes in Sin and Gota joining Essendon and Port. And then Arlo Draper made the top 15 to the Giants. I took a massive reach in Jesse Motlock with pick 16. I'm a big fan of his work. And Wanganeen Miller joined Richmond. Sydney got their key back in Van Ruin. Mitch Nevitt bolted into the top 19 and Brisbane got their halfback flanker in Darcy Wilmot. So we'll take a little pause there and resume with round two. All right, we are back for round two. Fremantle has the first pick of day two. Busher, who are you taking? And with this first pick, uh, there's a clear person on my personal big board that's a few spots above the next highest rated player. I kind of alluded to it with my last Docker selection. I was hoping another key would slide to this pick. The top two I was hoping have both already been taken, but... I'm going to go with my consolation prize in Jack Williams. Jack Williams. So that's, that might be considered a reach to some. Yeah. But you wanted the key position forward. Yep. I like it. Interesting. And so, I, don't, I don't think he's too far behind a Van Ruin or an Amis as a key forward. Well, maybe behind Amis a bit as a key forward, but not too far behind Van Ruin as a key forward. Van Ruin's yeah. more of a swing man. True. So I'm happy to sort of settle for Jack Williams because I needed a key forward not a key back as Fremantle Fremantle have plenty of key backs yeah, not you, so much key forward that's true you did put yourself in the position somewhat of getting of needing to take a key forward but uh, I like it you've got a good mix of players there and yep. Johnson and Erasmus in particular are very good uh, we've got North Melbourne on the board and their best of sorry their need is possibly a key back I've got a feeling they I think they'll look at a key back after getting Horn Francis um, I feel like their young Miffa is pretty good so in that case I'm going to take Leek Alia from South Australia, he's a slightly mature age, uh, key position defender with great athleticism, um, who is, uh, yeah, a sort of sprung up boards. I think Nightmare in particular rates him really highly, uh, whereas I don't know if Toomey has him so much on his, uh, on his radar, but I think North will reach a little bit for uh, best player of the position they need. You've got Hawthorne. Hawthorne in this position. They took... Cal- no, Callahan, was it? Uh, no, they took oh, Rochelle. They took Rochelle earlier. So I think I can probably get away with a more inside mid type of player. So I might go with Tyler Sonzi. Nice. He's actually from Box Hill too, so there's that connection. Uh, I would have t- definitely taken that pick with Sonzi as well. Yep. 
I didn't even know it was from Box Hill. That's a nice little bonus. Yeah, that would, yeah. That would have skewed me even more towards him if yep. I wasn't skewed towards him already. Yeah, that's it. So some good players on my board here, and I'm entering the Geelong. I'm entering Geelong, um, <laughs> but they've got some a host of picks in the 30s too. So. Gee whiz, I think I'm going to take the punt on Angus Sheldrick from Western Australia uh, mm-hmm. as a very, very nuggety. He is a full 12 nugget box set. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. 24 pack. Um, 179 centimetres, 87 kilos, and uh, really, really stood out with his performance against South Australia. And I think it was the third game where he was, uh, played a match winning role. And I think he kicked the winning goal, but he also, you know, looked really good on um, Horn Francis at times. So Geelong have been linked to him, so that's why I've taken the punt a little bit early. Um, but there's some other good names on the board. Who have you got with Hawthorne? With Hawthorne again? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go the other man I was tossing out between when I chose Tyler Sonzi and I'll go with Matthew Roberts. Matthew Roberts. Bit of a best available, but also he can play a little bit outside as well. Just a bit of a different player to Tyler from what I've seen, so they can both potentially offer something to that Hawthorne midfield. Mm-hmm. Yep, so Hawthorne have gone midfield heavy with Rochelle, Sonzi and Roberts, so I think they'll be happy with that, I would have thought. I can't I can't add Rochelle as a small forward as well, sort of thing. So that was that's true. Oh sorry, yeah, yeah. I mean rationale. Yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah. yeah. But that's good. I think they need a midfielder, so yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay. Carlton at pick twenty six, I think are going to bid on St Kilda's Mitch Owens um, as a bigger bodied sort of utility midfielder, one hundred and ninety centimeters, eighty five kilos. Uh, St Kilda's next generation academy talent. Would you match that bid? I imagine I would at this point. I think you would, to be honest. So if we're going to keep it somewhat realistic, uh, we'll we'll do that down. So I'll just skip all these players down. Whoops. Damn it. Um, so Carlton are still on the board and with St Kilda they get Mitch Owens to go with uh, who was it? Josh Ward. So a couple of midfielders there for St Kilda um, with probably more to come as well. So Carlton back on the board with pick 27 and I think they will take oh this is tough. There's, there's a couple of guys here I didn't actually expect to be still available. Um, but I'm going to go with oh, Zach Taylor. You know, I was literally going to say another name until the last second there. That's how torn I was. <laughs> but Zach Taylor as a smaller sort of um, uh, midfielder forward who has been compared to uh, a bit of a Zach Butters type. Um, very, very talented. So uh, that's the best available pick for Carlton who don't have a second rounder. So um, we've now got Richmond on the board and they've got three consecutive picks. You can take the first one, Bush. They've Good. taken Andrew and Wanganeen Miller. Andrew. Okay, so with the first pick, I've got a bit of a inside, mid, medium, forward type of player here in Sam Butler, but I think could mm. add something different. They haven't taken a midfielder so far, so... And they drafted good. his brother a few years yeah. ago. It's good to get him through the door. Yep, I like it. Uh, cool. I'm going to mix things up a little bit here, and I'm going to say Richmond bid on GWS's Josh Fay. I think it's pronounced Fay. Fay. Uh, he's a halfback flanker, not really a need, but I think they'll keep GWS honest here. Do you match that bid? I think GWS is in a position to match. So yeah, I'll yeah, look. they are. So, sweet. So, we'll go that down a bit. So, Richmond still have two consecutive picks, and we'll just add Josh Fay here, which is probably a little bit later, but it kind of kind of depends. Uh, I'm going to still... I've got Richmond here. I'm still looking at the midfield in particular, and there is a few good talents still available. I'm going to go with Campbell Chesser mm-hmm. as an outside sort of running midfielder, can play out... Um, in the back half as well as a sort of rebounding defender. But this is probably actually a little bit later than I think he will go, to be honest. I think he's a chance for top 20. Uh, but I had to go and pick Jesse Motlop to throw that out. So um, Richmond's back on the board. Uh, I think as Richmond, because so far they've taken Mac Andrews, a bit of a rock. They took, was it Mangan- Manganine as the second? Wanganine, yeah. He's a in- outside mid. We took a couple of mids. So I'm going to go something a little bit different here and take Rhett Bazo as a key defender. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, so they've got two keys. Uh, they've got a couple of outside mids and a midfielder forward. I, they probably could have, just reflecting on both of our picks generally, Richmond probably would look for a genuine inside mid somewhere in there as well. Um, Who's sort of at that mark, really? There's well, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, there, I'm right? not sort of criticizing you. I'm just sort of uh, uh, saying uh, at that mark. Um, Oh, there's a couple of names that I don't want to give away. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, that's all right. Rhett Bazo is, is probably the best available pick. And to be honest, I would have taken him with the very next pick with the West Coast Eagles. Um, although this does give me an excuse to take a genuine midfielder. Who we've got on the board? Uh, there's not a lot of midfield names, uh, to be honest. Um, I might bid on Marcus Windhager 
for St Kilda. Do you match that? I imagine I would. Yeah, yeah. I think you would too. So. Is there an issue with the Saints being able to match both of the guys they have to match? I or? don't believe so. Okay, to be honest. And person. yeah, and I think um, I think the ones we did bid on probably they came a little bit later anyway. So yeah. Um, so St Kilda then get Windhager. So just to wrap St Kilda, they've got Owens, Windhager, and Ward. So some good midfield options there. Uh, West Coast back on the board. Oh, there's a couple of names here, but the, none, none of these names were the ones I'd considered for West Coast picks originally. And I feel pressure to take a midfielder because I took Amos with pick 12. I'll take Blake Howes from Victoria. We're probably more likely to go West Australian with this pick anyway. Uh, but he is a 190 centre mid- midfielder forward, um, sort of more of a wingman, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, outside mid, medium forwards, kind of what I've classified. Yeah, yeah, outside mid wingman, that's right. So uh, West Coast add a player of that type to Jai Amos. You've got Geelong at pick 34, and they've taken Sheldrick. I'm going to go with the next best ruck prospect here with Toby Conway. I oh. think they still need to get a ruck through their door long term, Geelong. So this is this a nightmare draft. One for me. This is a nightmare draft for West Coast. <laughs> I was really, <laughs> I was considering taking him with West Coast pick, but decided not to. Excuse me. <laughs> decided to go for a midfielder. So that hurt. Um, speaking of midfielders, uh, oh, I've got. Uh, so who's Sydney taking? I took Van Ruin, so I'll take a, I'll take a midfielder here. This is a player who might not actually go this early on draft night, but I think I'm going to take him for Sydney. It's Cade Dittmar from Western Australia, a very, very big-bodied, mulleted inside midfielder. I don't even have him on my board. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know Sydney have interviewed him three times, so yeah. I'm going off a little bit of a guesswork there yeah. uh, based on some knowledge. But um, either way, I did sort of say that they did need that big-bodied inside midfielder. And uh, at, at 35, Dittmar, they, they're going to go ahead of West Coast at 39 uh, and take their man. So you have uh, Geelong again. Geelong again. I, th- I might go... They've lost Jordan Clark in the off-season. Yep. They need another young outside runner. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the brother of Chad Warner, Corey Warner. Oh, might be yeah. reaching a little bit. That's all right. I actually did not have him on my board. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, because he's a good player. I didn't have Dittmar on my board. Yeah, fair so enough. Even on that. Yeah, so Corey Warner from uh, East Fremantle. Yep. Uh, yeah, I've seen him play, and he's uh, he's quite quite different to Chad. Yep, he's, he's a very classy outside. outside mid. He's got some good combine numbers, I believe. So yeah, yeah. Shown he's got the physical attributes to be an outside player at the AFL level. Yes, that's it. Uh, we've got Adelaide at pick thirty-seven as this draft starts to wind down. Uh, they have taken Ben Hobbs, and uh, to be honest, I can't believe this bloke's still on the board. Actually, Tom Brown from Victoria as a running defender. I was going to take him for Geelong if I had a pick around this range, but you've got all of their picks, so. Um, <laughs> I will take him for Adelaide as a uh, as a running half. He was significantly higher than the rest of the names on my sort of list. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know off the top of my head Adelaide's real need for a list as far as a halfback flanker, um, but he's he's the best available. Too time, good to go past at that yeah. point. Yeah. So you've got Geelong again. Geelong again. Bloody hell. Okay, I'm I'm probably reaching with this pick, but since I've gone a couple of sort of young guys, I'm going to go someone who can be a bit of a medium defender for them, but can also has shown a little bit at Colts level in the guts a friend of the channel Jack Avery oh yeah nice nice I like it you could see him because this is a little early for his range I think but you yeah. could see him going to a team that's got a, a series of picks there yeah that's was sort of my rationale I figured that you could get away because he's only a year old like he's yes, not right, like yeah. it's not like he's ancient mature age player but no like, and he yeah, he um he was dominating the Colts when he moved to Perth this year and then yep. Rezies and then he ended the side in the uh, yeah. end of the year in the Back league. Back as a side. defender in league, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, fantastic year from Jack. And, yeah, friend of the channel, he's been on this podcast. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed he, he gets picked up. He compared himself to a um, Charlie Ballard sort of sort of yeah. intercepting defender. So, yeah, that'd be great to see. So, I've got the West Coast Eagles, and I've taken Amos and Blake ha- uh, Excuse me, Blake Howes with my two picks. Yep. Um, boy, oh, boy. I think I'm going to go with... Hugh Jackson from South Australia as a very classy outside midfielder. Um, yeah, he's sort of kind of not dissimilar to Corey Warner, what we just said about him. Um, yeah, he's just a, a smaller bodied, maybe South Australian version. Um, and the Eagles just pick up another midfielder and they need some outside class as well. So that wraps a very disappointing <laughs> draft for the Eagles. <laughs> no, it's, it's, just actually, it's actually fine on talent. I just, I just feel yeah. like any Eagles fans watching this will think, not a great result, considering what our needs were. But anyway, you've got okay. Melbourne with the final pick of the draft, Busher. Melbourne with the final pick. I'm going to... Again, they're a tough one to pick for because they're just so good all over the 
round. I'm just going to go with the name that's at the top of my board at this point, and that is Judson Clark. Judson Clark, I like it. Bit yeah. of a small forward and also can defend it. Just a small, versatile player. Mm-hmm. Something that they might be able to incorporate into their team, add a bit of a point of difference because they've got so much talent that offers so much stuff. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. That's a, it's a good. That's a very Melbourne sort of pick, and they've just picked Nevitt as well early in this draft. So, yeah, um, yeah I think they'll be happy with that. Uh, one, uh, we've come to the end of the draft. One name I'm surprised didn't get through was Connor McDonald. I kept wanting to take him, but I didn't. Um, but he's actually missed out on the top 40. But far crazier things than ha- that have happened on draft night. I'll take you through the second round. Fremantle kicked us off with Jack Williams from East Fremantle. Uh, North took Lee Galea. Hawthorne got their man in Sonzi before Geelong pounced on Angus Beef Sheldrick. Hawthorne got Matthew Roberts. St Kilda got their first academy player in Mitch Owens before Carlton got Zach Taylor. Richmond went Sam Butler before uh, Farhe or Far Fay, sorry, went to GWS. I'm not sure how to say it. I think it's Fay. And then Richmond took uh, the double double punch in Chesa and Chesa and Bazo, which is really disappointing. They're two players that I was really hoping would get to the Eagles. St Kilda matched a bid for Windhager before the Eagles took Blake Howes. The Ruckman, the, uh, in fact, this, only the second Ruckman in the draft joined Geelong at pick 34 in Toby Conway. St Kilda, sorry, Sydney pounced on Kay Dittmar. I'm, I'm absolutely falling apart here. <laughs> Corey Warner, uh, brother of Chad, joined Geelong. Tom Brown went to Adelaide. Our boy Jack Avery went to Geelong. And the Eagles drafted Hugh Jackson before finally Melbourne took Judson Clark. And that comes to the end of the draft. How do you feel about Fremantle's performance there with Johnson, Erasmus and Williams? I'd be very happy if we got those three through the door on the day. Mm. I probably do admit I probably was reaching slightly for Williams, but at the point with the other players I'd taken earlier, we needed a key. We still needed a key forward, and he was comfortably the best one available at that point. Yeah. Even though I was kind of hoping a Van Ruin or Amos would slide, but I knew it was unlikely when I made the choices I made early. Yep. Yep. I, I like it. Is there anyone that stands out as, as having dominated this draft? I mean, Richmond had five picks. They got Mac Andrew. Wangadine Miller, Sam Butler, Rhett Bazo, Campbell Chester. That is actually a very, very strong draft. Equally, oh, yeah. though, Hawthorne with Trichelli, Sonzi, and Roberts did very well, too. Um, yeah, with the Eagles, I my only regret really is just not picking up a genuine inside mid. Uh, we've got some, a couple of outside mids and Jai Amos, but uh, I think long. Could you have gone Goda or something instead of Amos at that 12, possibly? We could have. I do just prefer Amos as a prospect yeah. slightly, though. So, um, and I, I feel like we may feel the same way, but it could it could un- end up being you know completely opposite. So, yeah. anyway, guys, that is the draft wrapped. Um, our top forty. Remember, this was not a prediction. This was just a fun game to see who would yep. we take at uh, at the re- respective picks. Um, join us on draft day. By the way, are you free to do the dr- last it's Wednesday? Eh? Wednesday and Thursday. What time? It's four till seven both oh, yeah, days, I think. Okay, yeah. yeah, sweet. I'm pretty sure it's Perth time. So yeah. um, we'll double check that. But yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, doing the live stream, guys. So tune in and, uh, and that will just about wrap the, the year. Maybe we'll do something post-draft. But yeah. Um, yeah, coming to the end of it, guys. So thank you so much for everything this year. And yeah, we'll see you when we see you. Well, we'll see you in the draft, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>